Wow, we got a cute little pod of dolphins. It wasn't just one or two. <laughs> I mean, that water just looks beautiful. We had ideal uh, splashdown parameters today. Obviously, wave height, narrow concern. Um, the weather is beautiful, as Jaden mentioned, in the 60s, sunny. Looking forward to seeing Crew 9 exit the capsule here shortly once they get hoisted onto the recovery vessel, Megan. We right there have our first view of Dragon Freedom coming home to Earth. And that view is from the WB-57, which is one of NASA's high-altitude planes that is tracking. Um, now, because of the way that this uh, camera is configured, it does look like it is uh, dark, but it is indeed daytime, and you're beginning to see that plasma trail as uh, Dragon re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. All of that is expected. We are uh, anticipating an acquisition of signal around 2.51 p.m. Pacific time, so just minutes from now, and you may hear the core begin to hail out um, or call Dragon uh, for communications and see if we can potentially get communications with them a little bit earlier. Following this, we'll have two events in rapid succession. We'll have the Drogue parachutes deploy at 2.53 p.m. Pacific, followed by the mains just one minute later at 2.54 p.m. Pacific time, ahead of a splashdown at 2.57 p.m. Pacific time off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. Three minutes. Pretty incredible views of the Dragon spacecraft making its way home back to planet Earth with the Crew-9 astronauts on board. Once again, this view is coming from the WB-57 plane. That heat shield we can see doing magnificent work as it works to... Um, Freedom, SpaceX, comm check. All right, we're gonna start hearing uh, the SpaceX crew operations research, resource engineer. SpaceX Freedom is with you. 4.16, enjoying the ride. Copy that, Freedom. Great news there from Commander Nick Haig reporting back. We see a healthy flight computer, expect automated shoot deployment. Like we said before, things moving very quickly as Dragon Freedom makes its way home. Next event uh, coming up will be deployment of the Drogue parachutes. This occurs around 18,000 feet. GPS has converged. Expect nominal altitude for Drogue chute deployment. We're about two minutes away from deployment of those drogue parachutes. Now the heat shield uh, is, is continuing to work to slow the vehicle down. That, that entry period, the, the, space, the, excuse me, the, the Dragon spacecraft went from orbital velocity about 17,500 miles per hour down to about 350 miles per hour. So that really gives you a sense of why that plasma builds up on the exterior of the capsule thanks to the heat shield and the work that it does. Those drogue parachutes will slow it down from 350 to about 119 miles per hour. We can see... 15 kilometers. Brace for drogue window. We can see seat rotation happening inside the capsule. Great to get those first views of our crew members. Once again, the capsules are going about 350 miles per hour when the drogues are deployed. Um, those drogue parachutes that we manufacture here in-house are uh, going to slow the, the, the spacecraft down to 119 miles per hour. And that is when we will see the main parachutes deploy, and that occurs about 6,000 feet above the ocean's surface. And we are expecting drogue deployment at 2.53 p.m. Pacific, so we should see it any second now. And there you are getting a great view of Crew-9 inside Dragon Freedom as it returns back to Earth. We are awaiting the drogue deploys. This view coming from the WB-57 high-altitude plane. And there you see it on your screen, drogue deployment. Drogue descent rate now. You can hear the crowd here. Visual on two healthy drogues. 
crowd here very excited as Dragon Freedom continues to make its way back to planet Earth. Next up, we'll stand by for the main deployment of the parachutes. The mains are quite a bit larger. You'll be able to notice the difference on your screen once they deploy, and they continue to ensure that the Dragon uh, spacecraft slows down even further. As we mentioned, Freedom will be traveling 16 miles per hour when it splashes down off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida, here at 2.57 p.m. Pacific time this afternoon. And there we go. We have visual on four healthy mains. That view was from inside. Freedom copy. Oh. That view was from inside one of the buckets where the parachutes are located. So we see a great view there of the reefing on those parachutes. And as those parachutes, those main parachutes begin to inflate fully, four beautiful, healthy mains. Now awaiting visuals of splashdown. Thanks, Freedom. We'll start to hear Commander Nick Haig. Copy, 1,000. As we heard right there, Commander Nick Haig will be calling out the altitude of the Dragon capsule from here on out. Landing in water is simpler and provides more margin against unlikely parachute issues. You can see those, uh, those parachutes continuing to slow the Dragon capsule down. And if you're just joining us, you're looking at 800 meters. A live view of Crew 9, just minutes away from splashing down off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. Splash down two minutes from now at 2.57 p.m. Pacific. We do have four healthy mains really doing the job there. Just breathtaking views of a calm, glass-like ocean off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. Crew 9 just minutes away from splashing down. This is really such an incredible shot. Uh, that Copy, was 600. That was a live view from our recovery vessel, uh, Megan, which is stationed a couple miles away from the splashdown site. We can see the crew there using their uh, their restraints as resting places for their arms. They were just in space moments ago, <laughs> so their arms were able to float freely. 400 meters. This is a gorgeous bluebird day here that we have for the splashdown of Crew 9. It's incredible to think that the Dragon capsule just minutes ago was going over 17,000 17, miles per hour and now gently coasting to a soft splashdown. 200. Copy, 200 meters. Brace for splashdown. As you can see there on your screen, continuing to monitor progress of the Dragon spacecraft. And we're going to stand by for splashdown located in the Gulf of America um, off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. And splashdown, Crew 9 back on Earth. Good main release. Copy splashdown. We see main shoots cut. Nick, Alex, Butch, Sunny, on behalf of SpaceX, welcome home. It is, uh, it is an amazing thing. What a ride. I see a capsule full of grins ear to ear. And as you can see on your screen, we have visual confirmation of splashdown. Dragon Freedom has returned home and NASA astronauts. System safety verifications are in progress. We'll report back when recovery personnel are en route. 
uh, understand, and uh, we're in section two of four decimal eight hundred uh, landing response, and uh, looking for your word and if it is necessary. In the distance, we can see the recovery vessel making its way. Copy, you're in section two for the environmental assessment in 4.800. That is not necessary today. We can see some harnessing being placed around the capsule. This harnessing is what will be used to lift the Dragon capsule out of the water and onto the recovery vessel. Wow, we got a cute little pod of dolphins. It wasn't just one or two. <laughs> I mean, that water just looks beautiful. We had ideal uh, splashdown parameters today. Obviously, wave height, near a concern. Um, the weather is beautiful, as Jaden mentioned, in the 60s, sunny. Looking forward to seeing Crew 9 exit the capsule here shortly once they get hoisted onto the recovery vessel, Megan. We can see that recovery vessel slowly but surely closing the distance there between, oh, Dolphin Cam back again. <laughs> Uh, we can we can see uh, that the Dragon capsule and the recovery vessel, that distance is closing. Again, this is just one more step as we continue to work recovery operations for Dragon Freedom. Uh, and we anticipate uh, the lift of the Dragon capsule to occur here in just a few minutes. Now, once uh, all of the rigging is on the capsule and it's hooked up to the recovery vessel, we will see the hydraulic arm, which is that kind of like bridge-like structure there at the aft end of the recovery vessel. We'll see that articulate backwards, and um, that's a good sign that we're, we're getting even closer to pulling the capsule out of the water. It will then uh, move forward, and uh, the capsule will be placed inside of what you can see there is basically a basket. We call it the nest, uh, dragon nest, where that's where the capsule will will be placed uh, in order for it to be translated to the forward end of the of the vessel and for the astronauts to egress. And before that does pl take place, we'll have uh, potentially views of the rigger uh, go ahead and jump off of the spacecraft there. That typically occurs when the spacecraft is a little bit closer to the recovery vessel, and we usually get a really good view of that uh, particular operation from one of the onboard cameras from the recovery vessel. That is uh, an operation that I, I have a lot of respect and admiration <laughs> for that individual that, uh, that does that. So again, Dragon continuing to get closer and closer to the recovery vessel, Megan. You see some of those uh, ropes now uh, coming into view as well. If you are just joining us, Crew 9 splashed down off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida at 2.57 p.m. Pacific time with NASA astronauts Nick Haig, Butch Wilmore, Sonny Williams, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Gorbanov. They're now working through procedures uh, to hoist the this, this spacecraft up onto the recovery vessel, Megan. We just saw that hydraulic arm get lowered into the lifting position. That arm will be the mechanism that is utilized to lift Dragon up and out of the water and into the, uh, the nest located there at the aft end of the recovery vessel. And the recovery vessel being used today is, um, as we mentioned multiple times, is named Megan, but that's actually after NASA astronaut Megan MacArthur, who flew on Crew 2 a couple of years ago. We're getting some views now from actually on so inside the boat. Yeah, Drag you're exactly right. Uh, this view is uh, straight down the recovery vessel. Uh, that platform that was closest to the camera, that is the egress platform. Freedom. Rigging is almost complete. Approximately five minutes until capsule lift. Great news there from SpaceX Core. So about five minutes left until we see Dragon Freedom get lifted out of the water. 
That hydraulic arm, as I said before, is the mechanism that will lift it. Uh, it's it's quite swift, actually. The the whole process of getting the, the spacecraft. Brace for capsule lift. Bracing. There it goes. Dragon Freedom being lifted out of the water and onto our recovery vessel, Megan. So once securely on... Uh... Welcome aboard the recovery vessel. Recovery personnel are completing final checks and stand by for translation to the egress platform. Freedom, 